I've been going over you guys' comments, and I feel that me starting a business from scratch and being 100% transparent is going to help you because many of you have some stream misconceptions. Um, one of the things is this is a startup. It's not a internet startup, but nonetheless, it's a startup. And startups typically consume a lot of cash. So here's the thing. I was running some numbers last night and this month, it looks like the startup is going to earn a return of about 12%. Let's see. Excuse me. That's wrong. It's going to earn a return of about 6%. 12% will probably be next month. So 240000 because I'm not going to... Well, I could include the 25000 for the Wells Fargo Secure Card, but I'm not. So... This month we we've been real close. To, we're at nine thousand, and we're trending toward twelve thousand. And I've seen a lot of comments. And for the last time, all you people who feel that it is so easy to go out and get a GPS kill switch, go out and get one and put it in your personal car and see what kind of issues you have, because. You know, there it keeps coming up in the comments like just get the GPS. And I've explained it time and time again that that's a struggle. And that illustrates a really good point. Everyone is saying this as if it's so easy because you guys have been fed this constant diet that starting a business is easy. Many of these fake ass YouTubers who are talking about, who are running these seven day um, challenges and these 30 day challenges, that's not enough time to start a business. But we're gonna talk about making money and losing money. And when I started my new furniture business, I lost $250,000 that first year. I had revenue of one point, almost 1.6, and I made a massive mistake with measuring. It ended up costing 250,000. If it wasn't for that mistake, I would have made 300,000 that for, that first year. And my friends was like, "You made money. You 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 know you were paid to pay your bills. Just keep going. Just keep going." But in my mind, was the success I had with the used office furniture. And I was like, I like those numbers better because I sold way less used office furniture, but I made way more profit. And that's what got me in the storage auction business. So you guys have got to understand. And this is why I'm starting a vendetta against the fake ass YouTubers is you get in business. It's normal to lose some money. It's normal. You want to know why it's normal? because you're doing something you've never done before. Like, I have no experience in renting cars. I had none until recently. Um, I had no experience in selling cars. So, honestly, I feel pretty good knowing what I know about business because at the moment, I have not lost any money. Let me say this again, I have not lost any money. Because when you hear me do a video that I had $6,500 in vehicle repairs, yes, it happened. But the business made $6,000 last month, and it's made $9,000 this month, which puts us at $15,000, right? And I'm currently not going to buy any more cars. Uh, I will take cars I have and trade out of them. So the consumption of money has going to hit a pause button until August or September when I start buying cars again. Because essentially what I'm doing right now is recouping cost. So I've already got the repair cost. I already got the insurance cost. <clears throat> and the next target 
is to recoup the money that I spent buying cars. And what I mean, I cannot put taxes in the new sales price. I can't put dealer's fees. There were some cars I paid too much money for. I know that now. And once again, how did I get this experience? By doing it, by actually putting money in the marketplace and losing money, making mistakes, this is how I learned. And many of these fake ass YouTubers have you gassed up that you're gonna start a business, you're not gonna make any mistakes, you're going to make so much money and you're gonna have a lot of free time. I already know that this year, for me, until I hire someone, is gonna be me. I got an assistant, she works Monday through Friday, uh, once again, one of the things I discovered is there's a lot of activity on the weekend. So I'm going to have to hire me as someone who's got to work every other weekend. And then once the revenue gets to a certain point, I'll hire two people and they'll be alternating weekends. So essentially building a real business that makes real money from scratch is not the rainbow or fantasy that so many YouTubers are telling you. I will talk about starting an internet business and starting a business out here in the real world. Totally different. And this is why so many of these fake ass YouTubers are gassing you up because the views. My personal finance channel, which is really, really small, makes close to $5,000 a month. I can only imagine what the people with bigger viewership, more views, they're making killer money. And this is their impetus to tell you what they're telling you versus telling you what you need to know. They're not going to tell you what you need to know because I've noticed this. There are some really good YouTubers out there who put out some factual, honest information and they don't get the views. Uh, this girl put out a video talking about how you can get up to 450 thousand dollars in credit with a bat with a low with a 551 fico and i went to the website <clears throat> and even with a better fico based upon my company revenue i can only get like 150 thousand with good credit in the company with revenue and i can only get 150 thousand you need to be doing like four million or five million to get that four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, you know, it, it wasn't a bad video because it's true. Uh, they will loan you money if you have bad credit, but you're not getting anywhere near four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Nowhere near that, unless your company's making like five or eight million a year. So, and they're gonna check. They're going to validate. They're going to need to see bank statements. They're going to need to see that income coming in. And th this is one of the battles that I have because some of you in the comments are making, co <coughs> excuse me, making comments based upon the fake ass YouTuber messaging. Because, you know, um, I got to say the car business is radically different than the internet business. And fortunately for me, I've had real businesses out here in the real world. So I'm kind of used to it. You know, it took me a minute to acclimate to, you know, uh, essentially all this crazy, because this, this is the car business. I'm gonna have repairs. I'm gonna have accidents. I'm gonna have stolen vehicles. All three of these things have happened to me in seven weeks. And it's going to happen again. And you know what? I'm glad that it happened. I know you're going to like, Glenn, wait a minute, wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, honestly, listen to me. The worst is happening in the beginning. And that's the best time when the worst things happen. One of the worst things that could have happened to me is I could have rented, bought these cars, put them on the platform, and it took off and it started making crazy money instantly because at some point the repairs the accidents and the stolen vehicles were going to come and if 
I had been seduced by early success, that wouldn't have given me the resilience to push through the tough times because they weren't there. So this actually is good for me, even though I know I make these videos, the stolen Porsche, a renter brought back a car with the bumper hanging off. It seems like a lot and I understand, but this is how this business goes. This is going to happen again. I'm going to have someone that's going to wreck a car. I'm going to have someone that's going to steal a car. I'm going to have someone that these things are going to happen. It's just going to happen. And I know that early. This is good. Because at the moment, I have not lost any money. At the moment... Cause I'm still got to, cause I spent like $16,000 in taxes. So let's go ahead and do some quick math. I've got, cause I'm coming out of the SUVs and the Porsche was 20. The BMW was 18. The Range Rover was 15, 15. That's like 20. That's like 40. That's 30 plus 70. I spent almost 100k on SUVs. And at 6.6, .6, at 6,007 almost 7 7,000 dollars in sales tax that I will recoup next month. At the moment, uh my car my insurance for all the vehicles is like 1200 bucks a month. So, actually, I'm a little ahead and depending how the month ends up <clears throat> and once I get the disruptive asset credit card paid off, I'm out of that hole because that's the card that I was using for the car insurance. I was using for gas. I was using for tags. I was using for repairs. And that card has a balance of 7,500. I'm going to make a $1,600 payment tomorrow, which is going to bring the balance down to six thousand and then end of the month i'm fully expecting to pay another two thousand toward that so july i will dig out of that hole and then i have a float on the mac daddy autos credit card of 60 days so i don't have to worry about that and that's where the insurance the repairs and all that stuff's going on that but honestly when you're watching these youtubers who are telling you it's easy, it's simple, you can make a lot of money without doing a lot of work, understand that they're telling you that for a very selfish reason. They're telling you that so they can get that YouTube money. They don't give a damn about you because I have seen videos of side hustles that have gotten 30, 40, 100, some thousand views and the information is garbage. As a seasoned entrepreneur who has started multiple businesses, the information is 100% garbage. It's just trash. It's garbage. And because people are uneducated and they don't know what's valid business and what's not valid business, they just consume it and then a few people, and another another really, really important part. Most folks don't take action. So this is how they can fly under the radar because a lot of people are not saying, they're watching it and they're like, yeah, man, yeah, man, it's possible, it's possible, right? But they're not actually participating in the marketplace. And this is a lesson that Erica Williams has learned. Erica started in trucking and Erica, go to her channel. She recently put out a video talking about why she's getting out of trucking because to her point, and I will 100% agree, when you have an internet business, you have a different kind of hassle. You don't have to deal with personalities. You don't have to deal with you know crazy people. You don't have to deal with breakdowns. You can make less money and take more money home as evidenced by the fact that I literally had all this cash just sitting around 
that I chose to use to start this business. <clears throat> because it's good for me because many of you are trying to start service businesses. You're trying to start businesses out here with the public. And this is going to be really good in the corporate papers. Because this is one of the things we're going to do in the corporate papers. We're going to take your business and discuss it during the live training. So whatever business you have, we're going to tear it apart. We're going to put it together and we're going to give you recommendations in real time for your business. And I feel that that's going to be some awesome training. I got to get that together and I'm going to probably start promoting it really heavy in July because now that it has calmed down, it has calmed down where I can, like I actually did a live stream last night because, you know, buying cars is very exhausting. You got to do the KB, Kelly Blue Book. You got to test drive the car. You got to make sure that you're buying properly. And I've learned a lot about buying 21 cars in five weeks. And there's some things I'm not going to do again because essentially once I get rid of these guys, the Range Rovers, because I'm renting them out to get some money to help mediate that $6,000 in sales tax, then I'm going to trade out of these bad boys and get cheaper cars and have a bigger fleet. Um, next time I buy cars, I am probably going to slow it down. It's probably going to take me a week to buy a car because I'm like, hey, I need to take this car to my mechanic and I have need to have my mechanic go over it because what I've been finding out is having my mechanic go over it after I buy it, this is when all these massive issues come out because um, essentially my first set of repairs, the water pump issues in the BMW, in the Range Rover, in the Porsche, those cars were examined. And that was something a mechanic could not find because this is one of the things that uh, I have learned. A car sitting is one of the worst things that can happen because whatever weak spot in that car, if it's been sitting a long time and that weak spot has been getting weaker and weaker and once you start driving it again, it breaks. So what I did this weekend is drove the Range Rovers and essentially what I'm gonna do, because right now um, I have one Range Rover, the Mercedes goes out Friday and I have two cars in the shop. So I have four cars that are not rented. And two of those cars are not rented because they're in the shop. So we're getting to the point where uh, I see I'm going to have a period where I'm going to have 20 cars rented out or 19 because uh, I have 19 cars on hire car. I have one car on Turo, which goes out Friday and I, the Porsche, you know, when I get renumerated with that, I'm going to buy two more cars. And essentially we got to talk about that because today is D-Day or tomorrow. I got to talk to the detective. I sent an, an email to the detective and it's like, it's the day, the day that the car goes like as a stolen vehicle. And then once I get that police report, then I can start the process with hire car. So hopefully I can get that money in July and buy two more cars. And that will give me, cause I figure trading in the SUVs and getting two more cars will give me 12 cars in July. 12 more cars added in July, which will give me a total of 32 cars. I'm thinking I have 21. Uh, my math isn't correct. I have 21. <clears throat> so when I trade in the SUV, that's going to give me 25, 25 plus two, 27 cars. I should be able to get 27 cars without adding more money to the business. Um, without adding more money to the business. And then I'll have July with the money that's already in the business to work and we'll see what July will be. And then August will be a month where I should have 27, 28 cars and I should be really good in that because I, like I said, I've learned a lot, but 
once again, like Erica, you know, everyone in the comments is telling me, talk to such such person, talk to such person. Erica, talk to multi-millionaire truck company owners. And she still had all these issues. Let me say this again. Erica talked to multi-millionaire truck company owners and she still had all these issues. So talking to someone and essentially my issues with the breakdowns, talking to someone wouldn't have stopped that. Now, let's talk about the GPS and tracker. I did some research on this. The majority of rental cars on the road don't have GPS and tracking. In Hertz, in Avis, in National Car, they've been doing billions of dollars of revenue without GPS and tracking. I do feel that I should get GPS and tracking. And once I get my GPS tracking technician, I will. But I'm not going to have money sitting in a parking lot waiting to get a GPS put in. The business model has been proven that you can run a successful multi-billion dollar car rental businesses without GPS and tracking. I feel that it's a very black thing because that's all the black folks are talking about. I got GPS on mine. Okay. Is a GPS going to stop someone from stealing your car? No. It'll make it easier to track if, and this is something else, uh, someone, I can't remember his name, but he was talking about this. He said that he had those GPS trackers that went in the little port down here. And he said he had renters taking those trackers out. And many of you suggested that I get those trackers. Essentially, I want the tracker that's hardwired in the car that they cannot get to. And, you know, when we get to that point, that's when we'll do that. But I'm not going to sit on money because I'm scared. Because, like, like I said, the, I have no emotional attachment to this vehicle someone's going to speed i have numerous vehicles where they were smoking weed i don't care long as they don't wreck it and as long as they pay me they can speed they can smoke weed they can do whatever i am not wedded to these vehicles and this is why i'm not renting this porsche and i'm not renting my bmw because those vehicles i would be a nervous wreck because one, they're way more powerful than the average car. This car has been tuned. It was fast before it got tuned. This, this bad boy, zero to 60 in like 2.4 seconds now. I get the wrong person behind the wheel who don't know what this thing can do. They can spin out and wreck and do all kinds of stuff. And the BMW is zero to 60 in 3.3 seconds. So these are not something that should be put in the hands of someone who doesn't know what they're dealing with, doesn't understand. But essentially, like Erica, she lost a lot of money in that trucking business. But she learned a lot of lessons. And like I said, many of you, like I already knew that I wanted nothing to do with trucking. I had people who was like, maybe you want to get a truck. I don't want anything to do with trucking because one truck repair could be more money than I spent on fixing all these cars. One, one truck repair, just one, just one. And I don't want any parts of that trucking. And essentially I'm dealing with a bunch of renters. Like right now I have Let's see, out of 20 cars, two in the shop, two here. So I got 17 cars rented. So I'm dealing with 17 personalities. And I'm beginning to learn how to speak to these people. Always be respectful. Good morning. Hope you're having a nice day. And then hit them with whatever I need to hit them with. Because essentially when I had to send my demand letter to the Porsche guy, I was straight to the point and very professional because I was like, you know what? They may want to look at this. And he did ask for a copy of the demand letter. I just kept it to the point. You rented the car on such and such date. I demand the return of my property within one business day or legal other adverse action will follow. Boom. That was it. Just bring my stuff back or I'm going to put legal action on you. And that, that was it. And I'm, I'm learning. I'm learning. 
because having an internet business is so different than having a business dealing with the public face to face. Because, you know, I, I will have some more stories. Um, and essentially, like, the girl who rented the Mercedes, she brought it back half empty. And I had to charge her, but I gave her a five-star review. Because, you know, people forget. I'm not going to like, hey, she brought the car back half empty and then her perfect 5.0 score. I gave her five stars, a pleasure to deal with. She paid the invoice and she left me a five star review so there's a certain level of management and finesse you have to do and like i said you know we're going to get into the training with the corporate papers don't buy the art of holding because i'm going to i need to do that i need to reset that but essentially these fake ass youtubers have you gassed up that you can start a business with little to no money make a lot of money and quit your job in a matter of weeks. And I am showing you a completely different story. I did not start this business with credit. I didn't start this business broke. I had the resources to buy 20 cars cash. I chose to finance the Mercedes because that would have taken too much money just for one car. And I'm really glad that I did that. So I only have one finance car, $600 payment. So $600 payment, $1,200 for car insurance and some other expenses. But my overall expenses compared to people who are financing cars are way, way lower. Way lower, way lower. So as we go through this business, as we... Um, also, starting an internet business. I think for the next 10 years, you're going to see a massive number of people run to the internet to start businesses. And 2009, I started my first pure internet business. What do I mean by pure? Like with eBay, Amazon, and Craigslist. They were internet businesses that were intertwined with me going out buying products to sell online. What I mean by pure internet business is a business that I made money strictly from my organic. I wrote a book, I sold it, I didn't have to go out and shop for anything. And there's going to be a big movement to people trying to create pure internet businesses. And I feel, depending on who you are and what you got to do, it's wide open. It's wide open. There are so many things that you can do. There's so many things you can build. However, looking at my experience, I started this YouTube channel 2009, August 6th. And it took me August, September, October to start making money. Then I made a little bit more money in November. Then I made a little bit more money in December. Then I made a little bit more money in January. I made um, 60 something thousand my first year. And the majority of that happened toward the end of the year. So got a lot to talk about. Like I said, starting an internet business is different because my first year, I made $62,000. My second year, I made $92,000. In my third year, I made $1.5 million. So even with a successful internet business, it still takes time. And this is why I really hate these fake ass YouTubers who are telling you that you can do what I did in mere weeks and months. My first year, and I'm gonna tell you, I was extremely pleased to make that 62K. You wanna know why? Because it was from my organic. I was the factory. One of the things I hated about the storage auction business is you would buy something that was good and then you couldn't get it anymore. Once you create a product or service that you could sell over and over and over and over, it becomes addictive. 
This is my first non-internet business in 12 years. And I feel that it's good because it's going to help you guys because I'm about to say something that's going to be 100% unpopular. The majority of you don't have the ability to start an internet business. You want to know why? Because what did I say? I, I had experience, so I knew I had to market. I knew what I had to do before I started the internet business. And, you know, from my experience from eBay, Amazon, I had a clue to what I had to do, right? One of the things that you guys don't understand, and I blame these fake ass YouTubers, is many of you have been seduced and have been whispered to that you don't have to do a lot of work to make a lot of money. And this is what I'm showing you because this month I'm trending toward 12,000. Next month I'll make 20,000. August I should do 30,000 from the car rental business, right? Let's go through this. April, started buying cars, April. May, June, July, August. It's going to take me five months to get the 30K a month with money, experience, and credit. Yet you're going to buy this little internet protocol and make 30K in four to five weeks doing much of nothing. This is one of the things that I absolutely hate with these fake ass YouTubers who are gassing you up so they can make that YouTube money. That's one of the problems because many of you, and even when I started this, I had people was like, you know, why are you doing this? This seems like it's going to be a lot of hassles, right? And it is a lot of hassles. This is normal business. This is what happens. Like I'm in this office park with all these business owners who every day are having trials and tribulations running their business every day because it ain't easy. It ain't simple, it ain't quick, but you don't get rich doing simple shit. You don't get rich doing simple shit. And I'm like, yeah, like right now, someone just brought a car back. I gotta take it to the shop, another repair. The Corolla, they got the wrong bumper, so I may not be getting that back. The Mini should be back tomorrow. And you know, essentially once I get these things fixed, they're fixed and they're not going to happen again for a while. So we're going through that. But once again, in two years, this business is going to be putting $1.5 million a year in my pocket in two years. I just got to stick with it. Wake up, fix what needs to be fixed, handle what needs to be handled, grow the company, grow the brand. That's all I got to do. I just got to stay on point. And, you know, and essentially many of you will see me go through this process for one year. The goal, not this, you know, not this August, but next August is to have a hundred cars. That's the goal. Cause a hundred cars is going to get me about 150,000 a month or more depending upon how things go. Right. So right now, you know, you got to understand, I am making money and I'm investing money in the company. At the moment, I have not lost money. You know what? I lost more money when I lost those drones. Drones just flew off, didn't come back. Two drones, one crashed. I lost $5,000 on those drones. I've not lost a penny in this business. And this, this is the beauty of it, Okay. As I go on, the business will give me more opportunities to level up and to, to come make myself whole. And what I mean by make myself whole, like starting next August or September, I'm going to start taking money out of the business. And once I take out, start taking money out of the business, it's literally going to take me 10 months to get my 300,000 back. So a year, like August, September, a year after, you know, about, that's going to be 15 months, right? And then 10 months after that, which will be 25 months, I will have my 300,000 back 
but I will also have an established business that's throwing off cash. Throwing off cash. Throwing off cash. But here's the thing. I got to have the mentality to stick with it through the trials and tribulations. Like I'm starting to get back into it. Like repairs are just going to be part of business. I, I didn't even get mad. I was like, okay. And I think this is going to be a really simple repair. And this is a hot car. This car will go out as soon as it's repaired. And I put it back on the, on the website. I'm probably going to get requests for this car tonight. So essentially I'm learning the game because the game is to keep your cars rented. They don't make no money when they're sitting in the parking lot. And except for the Camry that's up at the collision center, I had to take another Camry. And th this is one of the things I'm going to do a whole video about this. I'm going to develop a whole new buying protocol. Uh, I've called my mechanic, the one I trust, and he's going to charge me $150 to do a pre-purchase inspection. And I'm going to start, especially the BMWs. Uh, there was like one, this car is still there. I've noticed that a lot of BMWs I looked at two, three weeks ago, they're still there. There's a reason they're still there. I think the, the car market is starting to slow down. But essentially, um, this is the reality. If you're not willing to lose a little money, and I've lost big money. I've lost hundreds of thousands of dollars. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. And I was able to recoup that through business. So in this business, I've not lost any money. I've made some poor choices with vehicles as reflected in the repair bills. But I didn't know what I was doing. And I am also want to show you guys, I started a business that I don't know nothing about that I'm doing. And within two years, I'm going to have a million dollars in revenue. Well, actually $1.5 million in my pocket and a larger percentage because uh, I estimate I'll be at 300,000 a month from this business in 30 months. Take one, you know, take 120 K out the business, slide that in my pocket, pay myself 40 K take 60 K, put that in the dividend account and write myself a check for $180,000 every quarter minus 15% capital, you know, taxes. I mean, it's a beautiful thing and still have my internet business and still have my YouTube channels. See, this is what I'm talking about to do more principal because right now it's 630. I'm probably going to get home like seven something. And that's just part of it. You're not going to get rich doing less work. It's not going to happen. None of these little internet courses or tactics are going to make you money. But you sitting down and applying yourself and working hard is what will make you rich. So look out for corporate papers. I already talked about what's going on in that. And what I'm going to do is start with the people who bought... Um, the corporate toolbox, start with them first, and then the new people will be toward the end. And what we're going to do every week is going to take someone's business, tear it apart, and look how we can make it better. But you got to have a business. If you're just still in that starting phase, like how do I start? I'm showing you for free here on YouTube. Get started, get in the marketplace. So with that, that's all I got for you guys. I will see you in the next one.